All right. Good morning, everyone, er, and thank you for taking this time to meet with us today. Um, this is the uh, webinar for how to use virtual reality in the classroom. Um, and we are coming here from RealityWorks and want to talk to you a little bit about um, some of the uh, things that we have seen in this world. But just a few um, things to start with is some bookkeeping here. One, this is being recorded, so you can um, and we'll get an email afterwards along with the uh, certification of completion in this. Uh, so you have that coming to you um, after you, we have sent this um, out to you. And if you do have any questions up in the um, top corner there, you can go to the um, Q&A or the comment area and you can put your questions in there. At the end of this, we'll try to um, answer any questions that you might have as we go along. We thank you for taking the time and want to get started here with um, this question. And the people here um, that are going to be talking about this, myself is Jamie McIntosh. I'm the product marketing manager um, for mm -hmm. our agriculture and welding products. Um, I'm a former educator. And um, we have today with us the, our special guest of Chris Potapinko, um, who is our product support specialist. Um, and he's also our certified uh, welding trainer and a seasoned product support specialist at that. And then also has done a lot of different seminar speaking um, through different local and regional ACT events. So um, really glad that he can um, be here with us today. So want to just talk about um, the uh, kind of um, overview here of um, what we're seeing in education. Again, um, been all over not only the United States but also throughout the world and wanted to talk a little bit about what we're seeing in educational institutions and how they're using Guidewall VR. So I want to just ask you, Chris, you know, what are you seeing and how are they implementing? Because one of the things that's important here is not only what we are implementing but how we're seeing other schools use it because they're on the front lines. They're actually using it. So what are your thoughts in that world? Yeah, absolutely. So I come from a small rural town. So when I looked at the welding products, I always thought of just farm welding, fixing things going on from there. But as I've been able to go out to different schools in different states now, I've seen that they use it not only in an agriculture world, but they use it in industry, um, auto mech classes now. And most recently out in Nevada, their big thing is uh, theatrical mechanics. So it's ways that they use this to teach those skill sets. But in their case, it's for building those sets on theater and stuff like that. So it was really interesting to see all the different ways that just the basic knowledge of welding is utilized in, in different areas, different schools, different regions. Hmm. Um, one of the question, things that I've seen, especially, and, and you know, I've, uh, you know, Chris, you've been here in the United States. We've gone worldwide. We've been in um, Dubai. We've been in uh, Europe. We've been um, in South America. We've been all over um, the, the world as well and, and really kind of seen that same thing. And one of the things that I continue to see is that need for what we would say standardized testing having and making sure that everybody is standardized when they're actually doing their welds. And so making sure that they understand how to do proper welding technique. And then we want to get them into the shop as soon as possible um, to be able to use real welding and live welding. But in this case, how do you make sure that everybody knows what they're doing? And so that's one of those pieces that we really are looking at is that standardized testing, making sure that they, they get there in that world. You know, another place that we're seeing um, this being used is in, um, places that they don't have the ability to to actually weld. And so, you know, correction facilities and some some places they can't weld, but we also see it in schools where they don't have the ability to gain, um, uh, you know, shop space or they don't have shop space. Um, and so this is that place. Now, Chris, you talked about the theatrical place. One of the things that I've seen is um, also on the art or some of those students who, hey, I need to use it, like you said, an egg for certain specific type things. And so I want kind of that, that introduction into that world and, and kind of get there. So yeah, we've seen it from the egg world, the auto world. We've seen it from, you know, very um, high levels of, of welding in the sense of um, uh, tech colleges and, and community colleges down to uh, middle schools using it as well. So we've seen it kind of all over. So. Definitely. You mentioned the corrections piece of it. Um, I actually got to go on site and work with wardens and correctional facility officers with one of our sales reps here. And it was interesting to see that a big push right now is to get products in these facilities that can teach people or help um, basically rehabilitate them back into society. And they don't have the ability to have real welding in, in some of these facilities but they can use uh, the simulated welding, get that simulated arc time in there and start learning those core um, 
for those core mechanics of welding and those basic skill sets to get started and really start them down that path. So it is interesting that, you know, that's just another avenue that's out yeah. there that they can do that. And I've seen it with, um, especially in, in high school world, where the high schools, they have the shop. They have the ability to have um, students um, using the simulator and then going into the shop classroom. But one of the things that they're seeing, and we'll talk about it a little later, is in the middle school, they don't have that. It's a different school, a different spot, so they're not able to use it. So it's that um, kind of engaging those students to get an understanding, a taste of what welding is and be able to do it. So we're seeing in educational institutions um, really are using um, VR in different ways um, and, and uh, using it to really encourage students to come into that world um, in different types of programs if they don't have welding. If they do have it, how do they get more engagement? So we're really kind of seeing it in a, uh, a lot of different ways. So um, that's one of the things where we really talk about in just this world here, like Chris said, is from the ag world, auto world, arts. Um, that basic welding instruction. Sometimes they don't have welding as a class and this is their first introduction. They're starting the welding class back up because they got it cut as a program or they are just getting students um, to begin in that world. Guidewell VR is a great product for that. Um, there's places where there's no welding available and that's another thing where, hey, we need to start this because the careers are there, but we don't have it in our in our shop and we can't build out a whole new new shop. So that's another uh, place in there. And then, like I've said, standardized testing, that's a big thing around the world is making sure that everybody understands how to do quality welds, making sure that you're working with them um, to, you know, pass that kind of that qualification um, and then be able to get into it. So another question um, that I want to ask you in this world is um, what are some ways that really, in this case, are implementing, okay? Um, give some ideas from different parts of, around the country, um, some of the places that you've been to and how they're actually implementing, how they're using Guidewell VR in the classroom. What are some ways? And, and the reason we're doing this is because we want to give you some tips of here's some other educators that we have seen and how they're doing it. Not only how we see the importance of using it, but what we're actually seeing in the classroom because you've been out there, you've seen people all over um, do that. So, yeah, absolutely. So you touched on a little bit there of you know when you run into facilities that do not have the room or space to have actual um, welding shops set up. They're not or, uh, they're not equipped to do that yet, or they just don't have space. Uh, one of the states that I've been in is right next door in Minnesota, where the instructors there are actually planning a several year project where they want to get to that ability to have real welding booths, but right now they don't have that. Instead, what they're doing is they're starting to use Guidewell VR and start to teach those basics at the very beginning level. And their plan is to start with that, move into our live product later, and get into some real welders down the line there so that they can get those students started in that right pathway. But their plan is even taking it the next step further is they want to start getting them um, possibly some college credit so that they can get them into the university and start down that career path with welding. So they're kind of forward thinking and, and, and it's a step by step. Start with virtual reality, then move into that world kind of a thing like that. Definitely, definitely. So they're taking it of let's start someone brand new, let's give them those skill sets, move them into college, get them down that career path. Uh, so it was really great to see that and it kind of ties in with um, this other customer base that I was on at the school in, in Utah, he actually sets up his whole shop to run like a business. The students will actually come in, punch a time card, mm -hmm. and they'll use our simulators, and they'll go through that where he actually um, grades their work basically and says, okay, you've been promoted, you can go out to the shop, now you can do this. And they have to punch out of those time cards when they leave at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it's not only taking this equipment that we have and the lessons that the instructors come up with, but it's also now tying in that real world piece where, okay, you go to a job, you punch in and you punch out every day. And when you're in, you're doing your work. And when you're out, you go home. Um, so it was just really neat to see, you know, from that very beginning all the way to this is really taking them to that career path. Well, and you talked one time to me, Chris, in that same world, one of the things that he uses too is, is that consistency that they have to, just like in their world, do the same weld over and over again, and they have to make sure that they're consistent. So with VR, with Guidewell VR, it's that thing where they have to get 80% every single time because the consistency of the quality of weld, not I do it five times and then I slack off, but I do it over and over in that sense. So that's another piece of that world, real world experiences. Yeah, no, your employer is expecting you to do the same quality work every single time. And with Guidewell VR, you can see that 
through our reports. You know, one thing that I've seen is um, kind of in that same is, is, is we have schools from the high school to the, to the colleges. And one of the things that they do is they look at um, kind of the first two weeks as a review process no matter if their students are a first year student or they've been in welding um, for all four years in high school, they always go back and they use Guide Will VR as a review process for every single student. What bad habits have you gotten? What different types of things that, you know, over the course of the summer that you may have forgotten? Um, or even that of, hey, we need to walk through and remind and kind of had that mindset of, you know, you're never too good to learn new things. You're never in that, in that place. So, that's another place that I've seen is that they will use it to really the core, the start of their, their foundation of their semester, no matter what place, even in colleges. And we hear that a lot from college um, educators too. Hey, we have people come in who have a great knowledge of welding and then some who they've never touched a welder before. So we walk them through that first two weeks to use GuideWeld VR, kind of helping them to get it. And then we'll bring it back in later on in the semester for different focus needs, but we always start with that kind of thing. Um, another thing I've seen is, is high schools, um, you know, really kind of into intro to welding classes where it's that explore, exploration type thing um, or even recruitment. Tell me a little about the recruitment that you've seen and, and how some schools have used it in that way. Well, yeah, so right in town here, uh, we have one of the technical colleges. They use our products um, inside their, their coursework, but they also use it on like a mobile truck that they have mm -hmm. where they'll go around to different events and um, get the community involved and get students coming in to actually take a look and see what products their schools offer, what courses they have as well. And it's really, you know, in one way to try to drum up business for those facilities, but another way is to help young people start to see what other options are out there. Um, they may have an interest in welding, but they may not know all the different careers that are out there or how they're going to go about getting that skill set or how they're going to go about getting certified and go down that career path. So these schools will use these products in a, in a mobile sense where they can just pick up the VR unit, grab a laptop, and go somewhere to have it on display where people can come up and start using them. Um, so, I mean, the universities do that. We've seen it in open houses in New York as well, which we can touch on a little bit later, but uh, it's really just anything to facilitate um, the students and, and the instructors to get that excitement, to really drum that up and really show what's amazing about these products and, and a new way to get people engaged. And kind of a story that I have in that world is one of the things that, that I've seen in some schools is also um, not only in the classroom where you have your welding time in the classroom or your ag time we're doing that, but we see after school programs pop up here and there. We see study halls using it where with GuideWeld uh, VR here, you can actually move it to wherever there's a computer. And so in that case, you can have your students actually using it throughout the day when they're in a study hall, or we also see it in after school programs. One of the great um, kind of uh, anecdotes that we've heard is um, teachers who said, yeah, we have students coming in after school wanting to use um, the welding simulators to get better understanding of it. And they're bringing their friends because it's by word of mouth. It's getting out. What is this? How can we use this tool? And there is a connection there. We've had actually one in, in Georgia where um, an instructor talked about how Kids were coming and say, you know, where's this this product like Weld Hero, kind of like Guitar Hero. They saw it as a, a video game type, but then as they started again, they said, oh, I'm learning how to weld. I'm learning to get this understanding. And from that then, they want to get into that class. They want to start going because it's a career path that maybe they didn't um, connect with before. Now they can actually do it. Another example I have is just um, for that new teacher and, the, and or a new subject. We get a lot of um, teachers who are coming in and maybe they're teaching one class of welding along with other. They're kind of that CT generalist. And so they're looking for extra resources for help. And our GuideWeld VR system um, has curriculum with it, um, about uh, two to three weeks worth of curriculum that you can walk students through the classroom on things like safety, on things like um, how to implement um, uh, the product and the use of guide weld VR into your classroom about how to do proper welding technique. And so that is a, a big piece of it. And then we're going to walk our students through it. And so they actually are able to learn alongside or help the students as they learn how to do proper welding technique before they go into um, the lab to actually do live welding. And so it's that piece where um, it's really been a great resource for a lot of those teachers who are maybe it's the first time teaching that class or it's a new subject for the school or, or where they're going. Um, 
you know, Chris, talk a little bit about too, not only, you know, for the teachers, but also for the students. We have a lot of classes that have um, students with, if you want to say special ed students or cognitive disabilities that are being using it. What have you seen um, and how, how they're implementing with those students? Oh, absolutely. So a, a couple of things that came out in the last year as I've been traveling around is that there are classes now where things have changed. Um, back when I was in high school, everything was separated out. And if you had students that needed additional attention, they were in a different class. Now we're trying to bring all these students back into the class so that all their peers are together. But the, as an instructor, you're expected to teach the same coursework mm -hmm. to all of the students that come through. So a beautiful thing with VR is that not only do you get people that are in these classrooms, but you have them in a safe uh, environment as well so that they are all able to learn these basic skill sets mm -hmm and not be impacted by um, things that could be dangerous, the heat, the fire, the spark, um, the fumes, any of those things. So you can still utilize this in your classroom and engage all of your students and really get them all involved so that not only do you have these people in your classroom, but as people get their different skill levels, they can become mentors to those other students as well. And that just goes a long ways of, of kind of building those life skills down the line for them as, as well. And we see that in liability all over the place too, is that we want to, um, uh, educators want to make sure that their students know what they're doing when they're doing live welding. And so this is a great tool to get everybody on the same page. We have a lot of times where they have to either pass the safety test and a certain number of welding um, uh, uh, simulated welds um, before they can go into and kind of get the, op the key to unlock the actual um, uh, shop door and go out and do live welding. And so in this case, that is that piece where this is that where everybody is learning the same proper technique. They're getting that understanding before they can pass in and, and then go in. Now, there's enough other variables that they have to learn, and especially with, you know, uh, students who have um, special needs or cognitive disabilities. In that case, they like the hands-on learning. That is a, a core piece of a lot of times that really helps them get that learning done. But in the same time, one of the things that we're looking at is how do we then engage them and get them to understand it? And there's a liability piece. So if everybody goes through this, um, that standardized test kind of a thing where, yep, before you get to that next stage, you have to test. Now, another great piece about this kind of from a teacher standpoint is just that you also have those um, students who say, hey, I'm doing this and you're failing me or you're not letting me, um, you know, uh, being fair with me. And this is a great place for that teacher to say, it's not me. We have the virtual reality and we have reports telling you what you're doing. And so it's not me doing that. It's, it's kind of that, um, uh, subjective way of kind of showing, Hey, this is how, um, it, you are actually doing. And it's not what I, about this, what I like or don't like about you. It's your skill are you actually having a good skill? And that's another piece that's kind of um, important that's in that, that case there. So um, just to kind of uh, recap here, some of these things that we're looking at that how we've implemented is, you know, that two week review, new teacher subject have, have been using it. There's those exploratory classes or intro classes. Recruitment has been huge. Standardized testing for our students. Um, the special education uh, usage has been huge to really individualize that learning for them. Um, uh, the work environment experience. There are also, and we, we didn't touch too close since, but space limitations. We can't build on um, for more booths. And so how do we get all of our students? We have class sizes of 20 to 25, but we only have eight or 10 welders. So how do we get that arc time? And that's a big piece is that simulated arc time, allowing students to get into that environment, get that feel, that muscle memory, um, for that and then also um, having programs that we can actually encourage more people to, to be able to use. So um, so those are some of those, those big pieces there. So now um, I want to talk and kind of just um, talk about how, you know, in what ways have you really kind of an overall view seen Guide will be our help these programs kind of we've kind of touched on a lot of this ways, but um, what are some other ways that um, not just in the technique, not just in the technology of, of using this, but what are some other ways that you've seen kind of this help in that case? I mean, I think a big thing that's come across is especially with high school level, junior high level, is that it's a new way to teach these skill sets. Mm -hmm. It's a new way to get people engaged, um, but it's, it's a way to get all the students participating. Uh, you may have a shop that's there, but you as an instructor know you'll have people come that they're not wearing the right clothing or things of, mm -hmm. of the nature that they need to be able to go into your shop safely. So instead of them sitting in a classroom and you trying to figure out what they're going to do, 
um, and, and unfortunately losing time there, this is a way to get them on a VR simulator and say, all right, you're going to still do these same welds. You're going to practice and you're still going to be involved with this. But like you mentioned earlier is that, uh, you know, people get excited about new technology sometimes mm -hmm. and students uh, kind of like it to a game where they're going in and having fun doing this. And as an added bonus, so to say, they're learning those skill sets. Yeah. Um, and it's only after a while of them using it and see what's happening from this, some of them will start to realize, wait, I'm learning this skill set. I'm doing better with this. And it's realized once they get in the shop. And I think everybody would agree that if you're having fun and learning at the same time, it's just a win-win situation. And so if you can do that for your students, that's, that's going to help them remember it and, and keep that um, understanding even better in that sense. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The only other thing that I saw that, that really stuck with me this whole time, and, and I'll probably never forget it, is I got the opportunity to go to Brooklyn and work with a school there. And what they do is they have kind of an open house where all the parents come, they bring all their kids, and they get something that's, that's unique to me where they can choose what schools they want to go to based on what they want to learn for these skills. So kind of their right? career pathways that they're right. going. Like, yep. you know, this yep. is the career I want to go to, and this is a school yep. that may specialize in that. And as we were there, we had a VR unit set up on a table and parents were coming through and they were enjoying using it. They were seeing value in it. Students were coming through and it was fun for them. But I remember specifically, we had a young girl come with, with her brother and her parents and she was first grade or kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And she just saw that her brother was doing this and it was a video game to her. So she came up and I tacked for her, but she held the trigger and was able to do it. And it was fun for her. Mm -hmm. You know, and at that age, she may not realize that she's welding or anything, but it's just seeing that this impacted everyone in that household from someone at that first grade kindergarten level to their, their brother being at that high school level to those parents saying, this is really neat. And they all enjoyed using it. And they were all seeing different perspectives of why this was a benefit. And that's kind of a piece where we've seen too, is we've seen increased number in classes. So um, enrollment within your classes actually increased because of um, this as a, a medium of, of educating. Um, we've seen student participation and their interest in welding um, increase. We've also seen things like decreased costs because you're not out in the shop using the, um, the uh, uh, metal as much because you're in working and honing your skill. And then when you go out there, you have a better understanding of it. So then you're maybe not using as much of that um, early type of, of mis or having those early mistakes, you can use your, your metal to a um, kind of a higher quality, if you want to say that. Then there's also other places too where there aren't extra booths. And so how do you then implement more students being able to get arc time? And in this case, it's simulated arc time, but it's them actually getting that muscle memory. So when they get into the lab, because we think it's very important that you do the live welding, you have to do the live welding, but when are you are you using that to the most effective ability with the limited time you have um, in a class in a class? So getting that understanding first, then going in allows you to optimize that time as well. And then it's also that engaging of all students um, and really giving that understanding um, to that. And then there's also that training ability. And and our products we have here, and kind of with. Um, with all the things that we're, we've been sharing here is just that is we also have that training utility in the sense of we have data collection in GuideWorld VR. We have the port reporting capability and then it's a program relevance. It brings that relevancy into your classroom um, for, for what you're doing and, and how you're training because this is how, how more and more people are training in, in industry uh, world today. Absolutely. So it's, it's helping those different um, next generation of welders in that sense. So. Um, want to say thank you, Chris, for, for sharing your, your comments and your thoughts. Um, and just want to give you um, uh, just a, a few more in the, in the time we have remaining. Not only do we have GuideWorld VR, but we also have other products in the welding world. Just want to kind of briefly share that with you. Um, we have, um, in this case, uh, um, GuideWorld Live, which we kind of touched on. This is that next step for GuideWorld VRs in the, in the classroom using virtual reality. GuideWorld Live is real welding guidance. This is when you're in the shop, in your welding booth, with your welder, and you actually strike that arc. And in this case, it gives immediate feedback in the helmet for both stick or MIG welding. And so um, there's a curriculum included, but we have that as that next step 
of uh, products in that case. We also have portable workstations, both a large cart and a uh, smaller workstation as well, depending on the needs that you have um, for both demonstration purposes, but also um, in the, the need of, of workspace and storage space there too. We have a weld defect kit. This helps students to identify and correct common weld defects, and it's allowing them with curriculum and posters and, and, and flashcards to get an understanding of what the defect is, but then how to correct it too. And that's a big piece of not only how to correct it, but is it my technique or is it the machine that I need to correct to make sure I'm doing quality welds. Then we also have a bend tester um, that allows you to do guided bend tests, but also gives you the material, the curriculum of how to know if you've qualified a weld correctly, and then do you basically pass or fail those welds based on the quality um, of that weld that you did. So we have about five minutes left here and just want to open it up for um, any uh, questions that you might have um, in, in um, kind of what we've talked about today. And so I want to just open up and, and see if we have any um, questions at all from this. Um, Okay, I do see one, and one of them is, is question is, is, is a recommendation of how many uh, Guide World VR units you'd want to have in your class size? And that's a really good question because we've seen yeah. from, I mean, um, schools with one or two to, um, you know, 20 workstations and, and doing that. And one of the things that I want to comment with Chris and one of the things he does is he actually um, will go out and we both go out and we train um, and there's training available as well, both webinar, but also in person, um, those types of students and, or um, schools and how to implement. It. But, um, you know, I would say if, uh, probably an average would be, you know, if you have uh, 20 students in your class, you probably at least need five to be able to yeah. working in rotation. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, no, we usually see five is, is an average number for 20 to 30 kids in a classroom there. Um, if they have space for them, you know, I've seen some classrooms where they've got 10 units in there and it's just another way to get students on them and using them, um, you know, in smaller groups so that every student has more time on the units themselves. Yeah, and that's the thing is the most effective would be, you know, the more that you have, the more arc time they get, the more simulated arc time they get, the more opportunities they get. So that is something that we would say and suggest to, you know, um, to the more students you have, the more units you want to want to get because you want them using it as time. But there's also those, uh, you know, modules in the sense where you can rotate students and use them. And so it is, it's, it's location and size of classroom is, is very important. But we've seen where we have um, classrooms of 40 and they'll get 20 units because they want to do that, you know, one to two ratio. We've had others who, um, because of, of uh, funding, may have to start smaller and work their way up because we've seen them start with one or two, go to five, go to 10. So we've seen kind of a lot of different ways of, of how you can Absolutely. actually use them in that sense. So, um, with that, I don't see any other um, questions right now, but want to also include and, and give this to you that you can contact us with any of your questions and, and email us at information at realityworks.com. Um, or you can call us at the toll free number there if you have questions. Um, and also with Chris being um, kind of the a lead of our product support, you may even get to talk to him directly. And we want to talk to you. And that's one of the, the great features is with these products, um, him and myself, we want to help engage and, and help uh, give you the information that you need to be successful with this product. So with that, I want to say thank you, Chris, for taking this time. Thank you for taking the time to um, work uh, and hear from us. And if you have questions, please um, connect with us as we'd love to um, help you um, implement the best products uh, that you can into your welding um, classroom. So thank you for your time.